Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by OKCoin Crypto Exchange. Why pay ridiculously high fees to Coinbase, Kraken, and Binance when you can use OKCoin, which has the lowest fees, guys? So if you want to save money on buying and selling and trading crypto, definitely have to use OKCoin. Sign up, link in the description. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. With me today is Robert Matarazzi, the CEO of Luca. Robert, it's great to be speaking with you today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, Robert, let's start with your background. Where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, so gr grew up traveling quite quite a bit. Um, most of my uh, childhood school years in, in Miami, Florida, went to Florida State University um, and, uh, and then joined the Marine Corps from there for a number of years. So, so moved around quite a bit from there also. And what did you do before you were CEO of Luca? I was at PricewaterhouseCoopers for about six years as a management consultant working in their financial services practice, uh, focused on a lot of large scale technology transformations, a lot of those that were driven from uh, a lot of the, the post financial crisis regulation. So these were a lot of the, the programs that the various banks and financial institutions had to, had to comply with. And I have to ask, uh, what was your first encounter with crypto or maybe it was Bitcoin and how, how did you hear about it? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, while I was at PwC, um, I want to say it was 2017, um, I bought about hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin just so I could learn really just what, what it was all about. I had read some of the white papers and seen it in the press and was, was curious how the technology worked. Um, so bought it, um, I believe on Circle at the time, and uh, and then I remember I transferred it to a blockchain.com wallet, and that was my first. Uh, and then I held it until it was worth a bunch more. Thankfully, I wish I had bought a lot more. Um, until about three years later. So, well, did you add anything else to your portfolio? Uh, any other coins? Once, once at Luca, I did. I did a bunch of different um, of the altcoins and and uh, yeah, pretty diverse set to try to figure out how how the ecosystem worked and you know why everyone was transferring to exchanges that only had crypto pairs, for example, like Binance and whatnot. So, so yeah, once I joined Luca, I definitely definitely experimented quite a bit, and then uh, and then had to figure out all the taxes and the reporting, which which you know ended up feeding into a lot of our products at, at Luca eventually. Sure. So on that note, uh, can you tell us or give us an overview of Luca's history and services? Sure. So Luca was founded in 2014, um, uh, not, not by me um, and by Jake Benson. Um, he had Googled a uh, he had he'd made some money on, on, on crypto and was looking to, to figure out how to pay his capital gains back in around 2014 saw that there wasn't a solution. And so that that led to uh, to the next several years. Um, then uh, the crypto ecosystem emerged the more institutional side. In 2017, a lot of crypto funds were formed and there was a need for the fund administrators um, to have a solution that accommodated a lot of the intricacies to crypto. And so that was the the premise of the Series A, uh, Lucas Series A funding. Um, I joined uh, maybe about a year a year after that, so I was part of the effort to uh, the first really really scaling there of the team, and uh, and that was really a, a very important milestone for Luca switching towards focusing as a priority on on institutional products, both data and software, um, which is what we're known for today. Wow. Uh, and to your point of focusing on institutional investors, I mean, you have some huge partnerships, S&P, Dow Jones, Indices, State Street. Can you tell us about those partnerships and how they came about? Sure. Yeah. And we're, we're very, um, very grateful to be working with with partners like S&P and, and State Street and IHS Market. Um, <clears throat> for S&P, we're supporting uh, them with our data products, so Luca Prime and our Luca Reference data, which sorts out all of the various ticker symbols among among other other data attributes. Um, and so that data is powering their indices. Um, the indices are their own calculations, and they're you know they're uh, they're proprietary to S and P. Um, but we're grateful to be supporting them with our with our data there, um, which are off to a great start, and they've launched the first. Uh, 
the first handful of, of indices already this year. Um, so can you tell us a bit about how you're getting the data? Um, and, and obviously, you, you may not be able to tell us your secret sauce, but sure. rather, you know, how are you aggregating this information and then feeding it to these institutions? Uh, what, what, what does your process look like? Yeah, it's a great question. So it depends on the data product at the end of the day. It's a series of APIs, um, other methods. We collect both on-chain and off-chain data. Uh, depending on the product, we'll aggregate that, aggregate that from a number of different sources. Um, we do run some of our own nodes. We do use some third-party nodes for the on-chain stuff. Um, on the pricing side, it's predominantly pricing APIs from the big exchanges, which is pretty common for, for most of the, the market data and other uh, crypto pricing data providers out there. Um, what's unique that, that Luke is doing is we're, uh, we're collecting it and applying a, a proprietary methodology that's focused on uh, determining a fair market value, so an executed exchange price. Um, and, uh, and so we apply a five-step weighting process to, uh, to select an individual exchange to represent a primary market. And then you end up with a, with a post-trade data feed um, that represents fair market value, which aligns to both GAAP, US GAAP, and, and IFRS guidelines. Um, so that's in contrast to a VWAP or another average, which, which we also supply and, and support customers with, um, but it just serves a different purpose. You know, when I first heard about Luke and the services you guys were, were providing to S&P Dow Jones indices, I, it it was like, wow, this is certainly needed because in such a volatile young market uh, where, and, and look, there has been talks of potential manipulation here and there, but I think a lot of that is getting weeded out. But I think your service is such a big need and it looks like um, other folks are leveraging that data and possibly to potentially get a Bitcoin ETF. I mean, uh, with the likes of ARK Invest using S&P uh, Dow Jones indices, I think they're Bitcoin index at least. And then we know they filed for a Bitcoin ETF as well. Yeah, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, it'll be a big milestone for the whole industry when the first ETF gets approved uh, by the SEC. So we're all anxiously awaiting. Um, very grateful that we're involved, uh, even if it's indirectly with, with ARK. Um, through through our S and P relationship, and uh, and obviously wish them you know the best the best luck as their as their application is is reviewed. Um, I'd say really as as any of the ETFs or funds get feedback from the SEC, I mean I think we're we're anxiously awaiting it and just you know happy happy to respond in a thoughtful way to help you know address any concerns so that we can help uh, um, help with our data at the end of the day. Sure. Can you tell us about the State Street partnership and how you're working with them? Sure. So we're supporting uh, State Street, um, their, their one fund admin alts practice with uh, fund administration services. So as that particular practice onboards crypto funds, uh, whether it's a traditional fund that's gaining exposure to crypto or a, or a new fund, um, we're supporting them with our software and data to support uh, collecting all of the data on behalf of that fund, reconciling it, and then uh, and then helping them ultimately uh, create net asset value reports, um, just like they would do for a for an existing customer. Except we're helping for crypto specifically. Got it. Are, are there any other partnerships you would like to highlight um, that maybe you're currently in the process of working on, or just maybe uh, will be coming up soon? I know some sure. may be under. Uh, yeah, we, we have uh, um, several redistribution partners, um, IHS Market, um, which is uh, another, another great partner of ours where uh, um, our data products are offered through them. Uh, also with Dev Experts um, out of Europe is another data redistribution partner. Um, we have a, a number of traditional uh, software customers. That's one of our largest customer segments just with our enterprise software. Um, we support a lot of the big, the big name exchanges, um, OTC desks and funds. We have over 250 active crypto funds in our software and, and growing pretty, pretty rapidly. Um, and, uh, and we'll be very excited to announce a couple of our other uh, near-term partnerships and customers. I can't name, name their logos yet until they're, they're live, um, but there's, there's a lot going on that we're looking forward to announcing. 
Awesome. I'm, I'm excited to see those. Um, tell us a bit about the process of the cryptocurrencies that you're selecting. Certainly, I'm, I'm assuming the top ones that are in demand, but there's thousands of cryptocurrencies. And right. what's your roadmap look like for selection? And you know, is the plan to expand your portfolio to include as many as possible? Uh, we already cover. We already support over eight thousand crypto oh, assets wow. so we're we're the most comprehensive that i'm aware of in the world from a reference data perspective for luca prime we cover just over a thousand assets for the pricing feed but we bring in another of other a number of other uh pricing data on a case-by-case -case based on customer demands so we let our customers pick the the pricing data that they need ultimately uh, when they're a software customer um, we, uh, but our goal is to continue to expand all of our coverage, whether it's in our pricing products or reference data based on customer demand. And that's a continuous process. So if a customer is trading an asset that's not listed in the 8,000 that we already cover, then that's just part of the onboarding process. And then all of our other customers benefit from increased coverage. So. Got it. And as far as the vision for Luca, you know, as a, as a business, as a company, um, who are your targets? Are you going after, let's say, okay, we're going to approach NASDAQ next. Maybe the, is it pretty much the wall street institutions and banks? I think that's the phase that probably applies to a lot of the industry in this, this particular year, everyone's been waiting for mainstream financial institutions or data providers and other participants to, to finally, uh, adopt, adopt crypto, um, and, uh, which is exciting to kind of see before, before our eyes. Um, as far as who we're targeting, um, it's really any business that needs quality data um, that's, that's touching crypto assets. So it's a very, very broad customer segment, thankfully. Um, and uh, and we'll, we, we want to offer our solutions just based on what their needs. So sometimes they have their own in-house software and we feed our data into it. Sometimes they, they would like to use our software and we help them with corporate books or with, with some other use cases. Um, so we try to try to stay very flexible to what, what the customer is requesting. Um, and it does touch traditional finance, um, the, the crypto native ecosystem um, that's you know, already been, been using crypto materially for, for, for a while um, and, uh, and really anything in between. Um, we do have a, a retail or a consumer product, a free portfolio management tool, for example, um, that was just launched this year. So it's just getting getting started. but uh very happily are offering that as a as a free product to support individuals also that's awesome uh, that's something i will definitely have to check out that you have you have that retail option mm -hmm. um so on that note would you eventually maybe look at offering crypto trading or exchange services at all potentially um that's you know we do not have any intentions to do that um right now it would be competing with a ton of our customers and so um we're we're very happily servicing them and uh and serving more middle and back office operations got it so i want to switch gears and talk about the crypto market um lots going on especially with the infrastructure bill uh, which right. looks like it went through without the amendment unfortunately uh, what are your thoughts on that and and uh, do you see any potential resolution to that? Maybe they roll it back in a future date. Can you t give us your overview? Uh, what will happen? I guess I'm I'm uh, just as curious as everybody else. Um, you know, and and we're a proponent for responsible reporting. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem that that the infrastructure bill is is putting a burden potentially on individuals. That's uh, that's probably more than than is required. Um, so I look forward to seeing how it is amended, um, because I think, you know, responsible reporting is, is important. Um, you know, we need to add transparency and we understand, you know, the roles, um, the different government agencies and the government plays in that. Um, however, it needs to be practical and applicable so that it doesn't stagger innovation. And so that hopefully it doesn't, uh, discourage businesses from wanting to operate in the United States, I think are the two things that stand out to me. Um, so um, uh, I look forward to, to seeing it mature here. And, and I think it definitely does need to. Absolutely. Um, and it seems like maybe Congress may have to step in at a certain point 
to put out comprehensive crypto regulations because this was obviously this wasn't a crypto bill specific bill they snuck it into the infrastructure bill but i think there needs to be comprehensive resolution uh, like a specific bill around cryptocurrencies here's what the sec has to do the cftc so on and so forth are you seeing any dialogue or talks or any insights from from that end uh, you know on being on the building side of things um i mean we are contacted by all kinds of stakeholders in the in the crypto ecosystem um for educational purposes and advice and which i think is is great you know it's a big part of anything like this is making sure that people are informed so you know so that they can do things thoughtfully um as far as structuring you know whether it should be an independent bill or not i don't really have an opinion um i care more about the end state you know and and i think uh it's it's very safe to say that we need we need more thoughtful guidance in the form of uh, um, you know regulation codes laws whatever is applicable um, to support crypto and uh, right now what we've seen is it's very generic right it doesn't it doesn't really break down into the various um, sectors that that uh, that exist within within all of the crypto assets I mean if we cover over eight thousand crypto assets there's there's a lot of different use cases in there and and the guidance that we've seen doesn't squarely um, a, a, or a, it doesn't squarely speak to the breadth that exists within the crypto ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so on that note, what, what are your thoughts on the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple and, and specifically around the, and the asset XRP? Um, honestly, I, I'm I don't have a lot of comments on that. Um, I don't know all of the details, honestly. I haven't. I haven't stayed totally up to date. Um, I think it's you know it is it is safe to say that um, the regulators are are paying attention to any crypto businesses, and so this isn't specific to Ripple, but just generically um, that it's it's very important that any participants that are material are, are collaborating with with our regulators and helping to educate them. Um, and uh, um, and that they're working with them as as all of this uh, evolves over time. Sure. Um, so let's talk about Bitcoin and the crypto market. Seems like Bitcoin is unaffected by any of this news around the infrastructure bill. And it, uh, as far as the cycles, it seems like it could potentially double peak like it did in 2013. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you have a price prediction? Anything along those lines? Um, I mean, I'm just holding <laughs> through all of that. You know, even when it dipped down to the thirty thousand or whatever it was over the past month, I mean, um, candidly, I, I barely noticed. Um, we've seen, you know, much larger dips than that. Anyone that's been watching crypto for a while, um, I, the the use cases and the adoption that we're seeing, both in public and private conversations right now. Um, far outweigh any uh you know temporary fluctuations in price so um you know big proponent whether bitcoin specifically will be around you know in 10 years compared to other ones i have no idea but i think um you know big believer that that crypto assets absolutely will be and will be play a you know an even more material role in the global economy than it does today Absolutely. And we're seeing a lot of corporates um, adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet, Tesla, MicroStrategy, of course, uh, potentially we could see maybe the likes of Facebook or Apple or Google do that this year. Uh, but now El Salvador has entered the game and they're looking to make it a legal tender. Uruguay, uh, one of the senators filed to make it a legal tender. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, this mass adoption and, and not just from retail, but institutions, countries, it's happening on all fronts, it seems. You know, it's it's exciting. One of the reasons why I joined Luca almost three years ago was because I believed that that would happen, even though it wasn't happening back then. Um, and uh, and I was attracted to how Luca was building products for that future, for when mainstream finance and institutions um, started embracing crypto. And so, um, I mean, you know, specific scenarios like El Salvador adopting it as legal tender. I mean, that's. Um, it's going to open up a whole can of worms. I think it's a very interesting topic. It'll be an interesting case study. Um, and, uh, and and all of those various stories are, are just helping the overall industry. So, um, and I think, you know, honestly, it's it's just getting started. I mean, we haven't even started to see all of, all of the news that we're about to. So uh, theoretically, um, 
or maybe not so much that they can actually do it, but Luca could provide services to a country if needed as far as crypto data, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we do support government agencies and, and regulators. Um, currently, I can't name specifics or who they are, but um, but we absolutely do from, from things uh, starting with um, tax analysis and, uh, and reporting um, or any other services that involve uh, reconciling um, uh, crypto data, crypto asset data. So, um, so the use cases are pretty, pretty broad. Let's talk a little bit about the taxes, the services that you provide. Um, you're able to, let's say they're hold, let's say you partner with Tesla, just as an example, um, and they sold some of their Bitcoin. You're able to then calculate the tax impact that they would have um, in the respective year. Correct. Yeah. So when anyone trades crypto or has has a, a crypto portfolio at all, whether it's one asset or something more complex. Uh, we have to collect that data most often from multiple sources. We have to normalize it because those various sources of the data, so the different exchanges or OTC desks or wherever they're, they're buying it from, um, often use different ticker symbols. They use different file formats and, and other things that makes the data inherently difficult to manage. Um, so our reference data product uh, sorts that out. Um, the next problem that you have is in valuing the assets. Um, depending on what, what your purpose is with the data, if you're looking for fair market value, that's what our Luca Prime product solves um, for the top thousand, most of the more, more liquid crypto assets. And then from there, you get to some reconciliation procedures to make sure that it's complete and accurate, to make sure that the, the tax and accounting treatment is, is applied appropriately. Um, and then you get to the reporting uh, for all, just like a traditional business would would uh, require whether it's journal entries going to um, to their general ledger or it's a fund that's trying to strike uh, NAV reports um, or even individuals that are filling out their 1040 and need an 8949, for example. Um, it all starts with the same process that I just described. So let's say, uh, are you able to provide services to countries abroad in different languages, different currencies, different values? Um, or is it just primarily the United States right now? Um, I'd say our, our largest customer base is in the United States, but we have serviced uh, many, many companies um, overseas uh, for years. Um, we um, do support uh, reporting outputs in, in any foreign currency. Um, and, uh, and so are looking to expand our operations more materially um, globally. So, and that's, that's underway right now on it um what do you think about ethereum potentially flipping bitcoin do you, do you think that's a possibility we, i've heard rumors talks around it um what are your thoughts on that uh i have i have no idea i mean obviously you know ethereum is is a is a totally different type of uh protocol or blockchain than than bitcoin that's very exciting that you know enables DeFi and and uh and nfts you know among other things um, so it's really hard to compare them to one another. I mean, I think it's safe to say that both of them are going to be very material for, for, uh, for the time being, for the foreseeable future. Sure. And, you know, you mentioned uh, DeFi. Are, are, are you bullish on the DeFi space? Obviously, there's a lot of respective Absolutely. projects there. And, and, uh, and still, I think version 1.0, there's still some flaws. But, you know, do you see it? Look, we're now in Web 3.0 there's going to be DeFi 3.0 and it's going to be much more uh, structured and cleaned up and safer and things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, the, the numbers and the volume and the use of it kind of speaks for itself. I mean, it's, it's taking off. We have a huge demand for it from both in institutions and individuals. Um, you know, I think DeFi will continue to evolve in the, you know, the decentralized exchanges that are there. Um, it's very exciting and I, I, I'm, it, it really, what it does, what it offers to traders is access to assets that they can't, um, that they can't get on a number of the other private exchanges, you know, and it's, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to compete with that, um, which is very exciting. So yeah, I'm a big, big fan of, uh, of DeFi. 
So do you own any NFTs? Are you planning to buy any, any uh, NFTs? I do. Yes. I've been, I've been gifted them. I've, uh, I've got a series of nothing, nothing fancy or, or worth, uh, worth bragging about, but I do. I've got um, a number, probably over 20, 20 or so NFTs. I, I know it's, it's a bit different. It's like a bit of apples and oranges, but, but would, would uh, Luca explore maybe adding some sort of price aggregation data around NFTs? Uh, we're working on a number of things for NFTs. Yeah. So, I mean, NFTs by their nature are, um, uh, you know, all have individually um, individual values. Um, and so we do support uh, users that have NFTs in their portfolio and have for several years with our software. Um, but it all depends on the NFT and the nature and it's a big, it's a big can of worms, but absolutely our goal is to support any and all crypto asset reporting, uh, with our data and software. Um, a couple of questions and we'll wrap it up, but I want to get your thoughts on where do you see the crypto market as far as adoption, not so much price, but in, in three years or so, um, cause things are moving fast. Um, I think faster than how the internet it, in the dot-com boom and in the tech bubble, um, wh where do you see things as far as adoption? I mean, I think it's it's safe to say, and we're already seeing a lot of consolidation of the various businesses that are that are working on this, particularly as we see all of the uh, the mainstream um, financial institutions, you know, form plans and and announce things in the press. Um, I think we're clearly going to see a lot more of that, uh, even this calendar year. And then we'll see those businesses then mature after they've been launched. Um, it'll be really interesting to see, you know, all of the M and A activity that goes on um, when that takes place. You know, whether the big the big crypto businesses just become bigger or get get acquired, or um, or maybe even vice versa in some cases, because you know some of the crypto businesses are uh, are, are you know um, very very material and are huge. So um, I think it'll be exciting. I mean. There's, there's going to be a lot of movement, and I, and I do think that whatever the uh, the biggest milestone that will occur related to crypto, uh, I don't think that it's happened yet. You know, I think that the innovation is still, if anything, it's just going to pick up, and, and and businesses and individuals are going to innovate even more going forward. Absolutely. Uh, so I want to wrap it up here with some rapid fire questions, such as, what's your favorite food? Oof. That's, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> geez. Um, my, my favorite food. I'm, I'm, uh, um, maybe a go-to. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> flexible. I like trying things that are new. So cool. Cool. Uh, favorite musician or band. Um, also, I mean, geez, uh, I also change. I mean, I use Spotify and I don't even know who I'm listening to. <laughs> most of the time now, which is, which is pretty funny, you know, in 2021. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm not going to give you a name there. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep this mysterious for you. Uh, well, maybe this one might be along those lines. Favorite movie and favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not one that really picks favorites. So I've, I'm sorry to set you up for, uh, for disappointment. Here. <laughs> well, uh, is, there, is there a genre that, that, uh, you lean more to? Um, Maybe. Yeah, I don't even have a genre that I stick to, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, um, so you're more of a buffet guy, you know, you just, yeah, as much as you can, yeah. right. Or, uh, or order, order a little of everything off the menu. Yeah. For sure. Um, what are you, what are you doing for fun as far as a hobby when you're not at Luca? Um, so mainly, mainly trying to, to get in family time, um, which is, which is the number one priority. Um, and, uh, um, and love, love traveling, you know, move, moving around, which is, which is definitely uh, a passion. Awesome. Robert, uh, absolute pleasure chatting with you. And I'm excited to see the new updates from Luca. I think you guys are doing some of the really great work that is so critical for the maturation of this asset class. So thank you for, uh, joining me today and speaking to us. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me.